What's up everybody, Kamal here. Welcome to another video. So this is like a little bonus thing. Uh, I just uploaded the Monday morning meeting or just got done recording it rather. I will be uploading it once I'm done recording this. That's neither here nor there. This lovely specimen uh, is what I wanted to show you. This is what I started last night. This is my Viking blood orange. And as you can see, we're having a little bit of an overflow issue. So we're gonna fix that. Um, there's a couple different ways that you can do this. I'm just gonna do it the easy way and just siphon some out. Uh, not siphon, turkey baster some out. So I still have my sanitizer bucket here. Everything has previously been sanitized. So, this is disgusting. That's super gross. Uh, that's a normal thing though. That is what I said uh, previously. This stuff right here that dropped on the outside. Let's see if it focuses, it probably won't. But that stuff, that, that nasty, nasty, disgusting stuff, that's normal. Um, <clears throat> that is something that happens. It's a yeast reaction. Um, it just goes ham on the top. I, which is funny because when I first did this one, I wasn't sure if it was going to actually take off or not. I, I had uh, a small portion of this yeast that I tried to add to something and it ended up failing. So I was pretty disappointed about that. And I thought that it was the yeast itself, but I think what it was is it was just too late for me to try to do what I was trying to do. So, there's that. Now, what really sucks about this is it got inside the airlock, and this isn't a very nice airlock to clean, although none of them really are. But you just gotta kinda fill it up with water and then shake it back and forth. I mean, it doesn't have to be spotless, let's be honest. The main purpose of this is to keep bacteria and bugs and shit from your, from your brew. I mean, bacteria is not too big of an issue because it'll get killed, but you don't want bugs and stuff getting into your brew, which is definitely a possibility um, if you don't properly seal everything. So, get it cleaned off, throw it in there, and then what we're gonna do is suck out just enough to bring this level down. It also, I also don't like how the fruit is coming up this far. It, to me, really only needs to be about there. That a little bit better to me even just that little bit that that little tiny bit makes such a big drastic difference when you're doing these Get that stuff off the outside now I believe the way that I had this was this was in here I had this They don't like to stay in sometimes, so you gotta, you gotta, you gotta use force. You gotta use the force, Luke. All right, so we'll try to get this airlock where I want it. That should be good. And then the way that I have, oh. I don't remember how I had this one. I know that I brought it over. Oh, that's how it was. Okay, well I'm not gonna be able to redo it because I tied the rubber band last time. Um, 
So hopefully, ah, see how easily that popped out? That's the big problem with these damn things. It's very, very annoying. So hopefully the rubber band that we just tied is, because this one, this is uh, from asparagus, so it's a very sturdy, strong one. This one is from not asparagus, so it, I mean, stretches out way too far. Um, but yeah, it's cleaned out, it's fixed, it's back in. I suppose it's probably less annoying if I turn the water off. I just figured this would be a cool little bonus video to show you that, uh, yeah, mess ups do happen. And the stirring thing, the, so I know that I say um, that I stir, I feel like. try to pull it this way there we go that should that should actually work okay um, anyways the stirring thing that I do the shaking thing that I do the daily ritual that I make with my meats so if you look on the bottom here you can't really see it too much but there there will be a buildup that will start to form on here so for the first week or so I just stir it now normally I do it much more vigorous but because this one's reaction that it's been having and this is the Viking Blood Orange. Uh, small amount of cherries, I think up to 15 uh, sweet cherries and half of a Blood Orange in there. Um, but the reason that I'm not doing it too vigorous with this one, as you can see, uh, is because it did have that overflow issue. So I don't want that, that uh, yeast to kick up super, super strong right now and cause more problems that I just solved. So instead, we stir it up a little bit there you go. The other ones you want to shake uh, as vigorous as they can handle. I'll go get one of the other ones so I can show you what I mean. Alright, so y'all might remember this guy. This is the traditional with mango that we started last week, so this is one week old. As you can see, the croissant is building up on this one as well. Um, just a little bit, little line of stuff. That's just part of it. Uh, also on the bottom, there is all that stuff down there. Normal. That's stuff that's going to happen with your meats, uh, with your beverages that you're making, your brews. This is how the daily ritual, it doesn't have to be daily, this is the daily ritual that I do up to, I don't really do it once it hits secondary fermentation because at that point you want it to start clearing out, that way you can get it ready to rack. But, you take it, hold your finger in the hole, be smart, be safe, and then you just shake it. Get a lot of bubbling going on. A lot of work going on that stuff at the bottom is going to be getting cleaned out picked up stirred around also works to agitate the yeast get it going that's all you do that's it that's that's it um you don't have to think too deeply this one will next week next monday morning meeting we will be putting this one and also the uh lion's mango that we made that one in Secondary we'll be we'll be doing the same thing. We did today um, Pulling them out of these jars cleaning the jars putting them into the second jar to get ready To clear out and drink anyways guys like I said short quick video just to the point um, And then as always if you guys like these videos, please like the video subscribe to the channel and uh, Hopefully you guys can start making your own needs if you've made your mead before if you've made your own mead before let me know down in the comments how it's gone. Are you still making it? How long you've been making it? How many batches you've made? Uh, and, and what you really think about it. What made you start? What made you stop if you did stop? And why are you still doing it today? Uh, I also am very interested in new crazy wacky flavor combinations. So please, 
leave some comments for me. Let me know what you want me to try, and I'll do it. I'll try it. Um, I ain't scared. I'm never scared. Anyways, guys, I hope that you guys like this, and uh, we'll catch you in the next one. I'm out.